The top 10 contemporary art exhibitions in New York City last year, part one. Hey, my name is David. I am founder of The 2%, which aims to uncover and share the coolest art in New York City. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and follow me on Instagram for daily content. Part one is going to focus on my five favorite shows to visit. So like the mega what shows. In part two, I'll do the five favorite shows to hang on my wall like if I could. Kicking off the art year with Richard Serra in September at two Galgozian locations. On 21st Street was Reverse Curve. It's a huge kind of S-curve wall of core 10 steel, 99 feet long, 13 feet tall, and about two inches thick. It's actually made up of two pieces. Each one is, is curving slightly. And, and it feels like it's leaning as much as it possibly can for the least amount of curve. In other words, it feels extraordinarily dangerous, ex especially when you understand that these two pieces are not connected. They're each individual pieces that weigh 26 tons each that are just sitting on the ground, which means extraordinary weight and extraordinary accuracy to get that seam to fit perfect. Then, three blocks north, also at Galgozian Gallery, he presented forged rounds. Each of these cylinders is solid steel that weigh 50 tons each. So the, though he's playing with diameter and height, they all have equal volume and an equal weight at 50 tons each. To give you a sense of how heavy that is, uh, the average African elephant weighs six tons. I'm amazed it's not breaking through the concrete and going to the center of the earth. And this exhibition had 21 of these things. Check out the press release, which shows the making of these. They're called forged rounds, which means they were not cast or carved. They were hammered. So here's what a massive industrial forger looks like. This is not necessarily Richard Serra's studio. It's just a thing I found on YouTube. But this is the forging process. Making the creation of a perfect cylinder of equal weight across all 21, a, a feat of accuracy under conditions of extreme weight that is unimaginable. In October, Walid Beshti at Petzl Gallery. Okay, first, this is a cyanotype, otherwise known as uh, Sun Art. I'll put the, the Amazon link to this kit in the description below. But uh, essentially, I did this as a kid, I, and I did this this morning. Um, you go pick up leaves, you put them in the sun on photosensitive paper, and then it makes a white shadow. Walid Beshti did that over 15,000 times with everything that passed through his studio over the course of a year. Everything. If it was made of paper, he would paint it with this photosensitive chemical, turning it into a, a cyanotype. And if it was plastic or three-dimensional, he would use that object to create the shadow. So every piece of paper in the gallery is capturing two things, sometimes very private information of receipts and invoices, and then everything from water bottles to pens to ladders. The most impressive part of this entire thing, though, is that it all fits together like a, like a perfectly planned jigsaw puzzle. He didn't have to cut anything to fit it into the gallery. And the reason that's happening is because to pick which 5,000 things made it into the gallery, he spent 12 days perfectly arranging and rearranging and swapping out pieces of paper to make sure it all fit like a massive jigsaw puzzle. I wrote a, a, an article for Design Milk about it. It's in, the link is in the description, which includes images of newspapers. He also made these beautiful newspapers that mark each day it took him to install the show. Check out the link to Design Milk below and the link to every exhibition that I'm, I'm mentioning in the video. Which brings us to Madeline Hollander at Bordolami Gallery in Tribeca. She tapped into the New York City traffic signal system. So the gallery is filled with brake lights and headlights, and they are mimicking what's happening at the nearby intersection because she's tapped into that stoplight so that whenever the light turns red outside, all of the brake lights do what the cars are doing outside to a point where it's also matching uh, with the sun. So whenever the sun sets, 
the high beams in the gallery turn on. Madeline is a choreographer. Uh, and she does these cool dance pieces in galleries, and she was going to choreograph the traffic outside, which seems illegal to me. But she discovered in researching that the, that the traffic system in New York City is already choreographed. There's a complex mathematical real-time algorithm that is controlling all of the lights, that's looking at real-time traffic reports, at weather, at all these weird things, and deciding and choreographing and programming the traffic. So all she had to do for her show was tap into that. I'm saying it like it's easy, but it was an extreme amount of negotiation with the city of New York City to make this happen. Doug Wheeler at David Zwerner Gallery opened in January, had to be shut down like everything else for COVID, and then reopened for a bonus month in the summer. A complete alien experience of light. So this is one of Doug Wheeler's earlier works, uh, and what he does is he curves the, the walls of a room and lights it in such a way where there are no shadows, which gives your eye no point to focus, your eyeballs give up, and you perceive infinite white space forever. And for this new work, by the way, that back wall um, extends beyond the room you're in and kind of curves around. So that wall really has no edge at the back there. It is an infinite viewing experience. What's different about this one is that high gloss floor lead up, which created a sense of drama and also allowed you to kind of look at the other viewers of the work to the point where when you were standing in front of it, you understood that you are part of this thing, that you are being looked at and you are now kind of enveloped in this kind of alien, alien light and experience. But my number one favorite show of the year was Amy Sherald at Hauser and Wirth Gallery. Amy Sherald is most famous for doing the portrait of Michelle Obama, if you remember this thing. I'll st listen, I'll start with in intellectual level and then I'll go to the, to the heart, the gut of why I love these things. Intellectually, Amy Sherald is creating a, a three-way balance between the figure, the clothing, and the background. She's balancing all three of those things, which is kind of a new, weird take on portraiture that makes the kind of the total viewing experience incredibly visually exciting. But the gut of these comes from the sitter or the stander. They are all projecting power through vulnerability. What I mean by that is um, if you look at their hands, sometimes they don't know quite what to do with their hands. It's as if they know they are being looked at by you. And it's, it's, it's not in a way that you feel sorry for them. It's in a way that you feel inspired by them. Power and pride through vulnerability. I've always said, and I'll say it again, that art is an exercise in empathy. It's an opportunity to practice seeing through someone else's eyes. And I'm willing to bet that no one on earth understands empathy quite like Amy Sherald. Uh, I'll put a link to her story below. Um, it's, it's tragic and it's inspiring, but in a nutshell, at the age of 39, she received a heart transplant. And she made this Instagram post recently remembering the day she found out that a heart was found for her in that in that moment of extreme joy but also understanding that at that exact moment some other family had lost someone they loved in order for a heart to be available and so after the transplant was successful amy sought out that family and this instagram post this young woman is the daughter of the woman who passed away that gave Amy her heart. Read the full story, but uh, when you stand in front of a portrait that Amy Sherald has done, it's like you get a pe you get a piece of that level of understanding of the of the human experience that we are all literally connected, that we're all one thing. That 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 you get that standing in front of an Amy Sherrill portrait, which makes it my number one show of the year. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe so that you can see part two, where I'll do the five favorite works that are more practical for your wall. In the meantime, subscribe to Instagram. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon.